Hi everyone, this is our channel, Meet the Real Story. Please, like, share and subscribe. Do you remember me? Probably not. I'm the girl that can see the future from Wendy's story. I cannot use my real name for safety purposes. For now, call me Sarah. I might have sounded evil or even crazy in Wendy's story. But believe me, this is not even close to the truth. Let me tell you about myself. I come from an extremely strict family. I'm not allowed to have friends, I'm not allowed to leave the house except for school, and I'm barely allowed to access the internet. I live with my mom, my dad, and my much younger brother. I wouldn't say we're homeless, but we are poor. I discovered my power when I saved my mom's life one time. I was only a kid, and we were picking up my brother from daycare. Right before my mom crossed the street, I blacked out and had my very first vision. I ran out of the car and screamed for her to stop. The second she froze in her place, there was a car accident. She could have died. She cried and hugged me but never cared to ask how it happened. We're not a close family, so I never told anyone. I kept having those visions ever since. Years later, I learned how to control them. The few minutes of internet I was allowed, I always tried to look for a reason why or how I got my power. I never got an answer. I needed a distraction because I felt lost and like I did not belong. Now that I'm finally in high school, I asked my parents if I could have a part-time job after school. They never gave me any money, and to be honest, I needed some. I knew they were going to say no, but to my surprise, they agreed, on one condition, that I give them half of my paycheck. I agreed. I got a job as a waitress in a local restaurant, and it was weird dealing with new people, but it was also so exciting. I quickly made a couple of friends who worked with me. I couldn't bring myself to trust them, but at least I had someone to talk to. One day at the restaurant, I heard some customers talking about something called the dark web. I wondered what it was. After my shift, I casually mentioned it to one of my colleagues. He explained everything to me. It was on my mind day and night. It sounded like a place full of weird people, just like me. With my first paycheck, I bought a new phone and kept it a secret from my parents. I immediately used it to access the dark web. It didn't look scary to me. I entered the chat room and decided I wanted to tell my secret to a stranger. You know what they say. Confide your heart to a stranger. The guy seemed harmless and he actually listened to me. Next day, I found an email from an unknown address. It was a picture of my house. I got so scared and I turned off my phone. I went to school, and when I came back, my phone was turned on. There was another email, and it read, You're going to help us accomplish a few missions. You'll get your share of the money. Meet me at this address at 11 p.m. tonight. If you try to act smart, you'll regret it. I had no idea what to do, but I knew I had to go. I snuck out that night and met the person from the email. He wore a mask, and he threw some pictures at me. They were pictures of my family members. The first thing he said was, Do you want them dead? I shook my head. He said, A quick test. What's going to happen in a few seconds? I opened my eyes wide and said, A black car will come pick us up. He nodded his head in approval. He blindfolded me and put me in the car. After a few minutes, he said, You're coming with me. The guys here will do the work. And you will guide us. I nodded my head, even though I didn't know what he was talking about. Much later, they drove me back to the same address, gave me some cash, and threw me out the car. I removed the blindfold, and it was already morning. I had to run back home before my parents wake up, and that was the first of many, many missions to come. For a minute there, I enjoyed the thrill and the cash. Sometimes it was too much, and sometimes I had to skip school. And of course, I quit my job. I worked for them for what seemed like a year. Until what I feared the most happened. The gang I worked for asked me to help them track a person so they can kill him. It was not a matter of choice. It's either I help them or they kill me and my whole family. 
I tried to ignore the email. However, an hour later, a server appeared on my phone. It was titled, We See You. And it was full of pictures from inside my house. 30 seconds later, the page dropped and disappeared. I can't even tell the police. I can't do anything. That is when it occurred to me that the only untraceable person in the whole world is Wendy. Next day at school, I looked all around for her. I finally ran into her in the bathroom. I couldn't utter a word. I only had one hope, that she would hear my thoughts. I focused as hard as I can to think loud and clear. Wendy was fixing her lipstick in the mirror, and after a few minutes, she dropped her lipstick and looked at me. I begged her inside my head to keep her mouth shut. She blinked twice and left. The mission is happening in 24 hours, but if Wendy can't help, I didn't get a second of sleep that night. I know you think I'm a bad person, and I won't argue much, but killing someone was crossing the line. I wanted to get out of this long ago, and I couldn't. Now I have to help them kill an innocent person? Time just flew by. I got an email, and I had to drag myself to meet them. Their big boss looked at me and said... This time, you'll get cash and a fake degree. So stop acting like a baby and get to work. I nodded. I thought about giving them wrong information, but I knew I'll get caught. A sniper was waiting for a signal for me to shoot. I was only a few feet away from the victim. I was shaking nonstop. Right before I gave the signal, I heard a police siren. I looked at the sniper and he was about to shoot. I jumped and knocked the innocent man down. But I got shot in the arm. In the blink of an eye, the gang disappeared into thin air. Police called paramedics, and to my surprise, Wendy was here. She practically saved my life. Or are they going to find me and kill me and my family? The police confiscated my phone. My wound was properly taken care of, and they called my parents. To this point, I was not interrogated yet. My parents came, and they couldn't look me in the eyes. A police officer explained what happened and told them she's staying with us until further notice and they all left. Well, except for Wendy. Her dad was cool enough to let her stay with me until police asked her to leave. She looked at me and said, you owe me one gangster and we both laughed. A police officer came and informed us that Wendy will have to stay here as well for her own safety. She looked at me and whispered, We'll have a gang of our own when all of this is over. I smiled and didn't say anything. Wendy's face got serious.